In this exercise, we're going to take the tools and the language that we've learned regarding the division of the picture plane, and we're going to apply them to analyze artwork, to transcribe, if you will, works of art. In, the, in this case, we'll start with this Degas painting. And what the first thing I want to do is to see where the major divisions of space are on the vertical and the horizontal axes. You can see very lightly the rule of thirds here. And it looks like Degas himself was applying the rule of thirds. So let's begin with the most, what I think is the most obvious vertical, which is right here. The figure aligns with the architecture. Now, I want to go on the horizontal axis, but I want to point out something. When you have a number of shapes like these heads moving in space, they form a line. And this is something we'll discuss later on when we talk about shape, but they are forming a line. So it could be said that there's a horizontal division, again, right along the thirds. How fascinating. There's our first division, just like in our exercises. I'm going to go back and forth between verticals, horizontal, and diagonals. There's another very obvious vertical here on the far left, and we'll take a look at that. It aligns with the legs of the piano. So you see there's our first division in terms of that. And I notice a very strong diagonal starting from the foot of the ballerina moving us through space from the base here all the way. It touches with his foot and goes right to this ballerina on the far right. And then finally, interesting if you'll notice his cane here is on the thirds, but there's another really important vertical and that is where the man himself, the maestro, if you will, lines up with the wall and this vertical right there. That is our first division of space in the simplest of terms. This isn't easy what I just showed you. You have to overlook the details to see general to specific. Now that we have divided the picture plane in the simplest of terms and shapes, we want to subdivide. Once again, moving from general to specific, looking for other verticals, other diagonals, and perhaps arcs at some point. Verticals, horizontal, diagonals. So I'm taking a look here. I notice a very strong diagonal. Now I'm going to work with a different color here to make the point. From here to here, there's a very strong diagonal. Can you see that? Let's continue to look for other subdivisions on various axes. Here's a horizontal axis here. And it also meets with a, a diagonal, so we'll take a look at that as well. And interestingly enough, that diagonal brings me down on a vertical right along this axis here. You see, right along there. We can continue this subdivision in different ways, looking for horizontals, verticals, diagonals, the feet of the dancers take us right to this point here as well, you see. So you have to sometimes look through things to see these subdivisions, if you will. And of course, the maestros, now we can take a look at the maestro's cane as being another port of division of that picture plane. I think now what I'd like to do is show some of these arcs that I'm seeing. There's not that many of the subdivide, but let's take a look. The big one right here is in the foreground, everybody. It sweeps this way and divides. There's also another subtler arc that answers that, and it starts at the shoulder here of this ballerina and takes us this way. I see one more very subtle diagonal at this point, which is just this way, the way her head is tilted. When one could show that as well. So clearly there are many more divisions of the picture plane, but again, I'm trying to keep it going from general to specific. Now let's take a look at what this looks like as a diagram. So here you can see he's, he's relying heavily on perspective going back into space, but we're also interested in the flatness of these shapes and how they are working. And you can see I'm trying to keep this in the simplest of terms in terms of shape and division of space. Now that we've subdivided this rather elaborate com uh, composition in the simplest of terms, I'd like to take this moment to show you how these shapes and 
these spaces are taking the viewer on a journey. We travel in this case in a number of directions. Let me point this out. Really this ballerina in the front is taking us right into the picture plane in this fashion. But we also tend to want to go here at some point too, along this diagonal back into space, right to this ballerina here. And she's very important because she is a framing device that keeps us in the picture plane. From here, we might travel over to the maestro. He's, by the way, looking at this ballerina who's looking in his direction. So we have this kind of direction going on. The architecture is always taking us in the vertical, diagonal, and horizontal in both directions. So we always have these kinds of rhythms and motions and directions, you see, that's always occurring. And we're moving in a variety of ways, you see, as we travel through this picture plane. Then coming back to the ballerina, you see, here, we move our eye goes up here, it travels here, we sweep here, it goes on and on. So what I wanna do now is to show you just the arrows and how he keeps us in the picture plane. This is really critical. This is what I want you to understand <laughs> that as one of my mentors told me early on in my undergraduate years, a good artist takes the viewer on a journey through the picture plane and he does not want them to exit. And you can see all the various directions that Degas moves us through his pictorial space.